Hello guys and welcome to another episode here in Motorsport International in Romanian Culture Cars. My name is Baiku Vlad Andrew. I'm here with Luis Milone. Hello, Luis. How are you? Good to see you today. How are you? And thank you so much to accept my invitational. Luis Milone is the founder of KMW Motorsport by TMR Engineering Driving in IMSA competition, especially in Michelin Pilot Challenge. Uh, will tell us a couple of secrets about uh, his uh, more sport career, career, like I say, how he started the team, of course, uh, the results, achievements, and other things to do. Uh, Luis, let's start with a little describe about you. Okay. Um, well, I guess we probably should start from the beginning. I started, I'm 52 years old now. I started this when I was 18, so it's been a long time. And... Uh, I got into club racing. My first car was a Porsche 914. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And uh, I ended up working at a workshop that took care of some historic cars. Uh, so that's how I got my first introduction to the racetrack. <laughs> Immediately into my early 20s, I knew this is what I wanted to do. We started the business. The business that is KMW was originally called Autosports South. Um, but my business partner, Kevin Wheeler, and I have been business partners since the beginning, since day one, 36 years now. And uh, we started club racing. Middle 90s, 1995, we did our first pro race. We built a, a, a this is prior to the days of homologation. So you could build your own race car and go pro racing. Um, we built what we would call a clone Porsche RSR. We went to the 24 hours of Daytona. We had no idea what we were doing, and we finished 10th in class, 21st overall out of 76 starters on our first try. <laughs> we thought that was pretty good. We said at the end of that race, we said, we're going to come back and do this again next year. This was easy. We're going to win next year. And it took 10 years before we even duplicated that performance. <laughs> it's okay. not Yeah. But uh, club racing, a lot of club racing championships and things like that. In 1998 and 99, we were the uh, the Honda factory team here in America. And the same series we're running the Alfa Romeos in now was called Motorola Cup back in the late 90s. And we ran the Acura Integra R. And we won the championship in, two, in, in 1998 and 99. And uh, that launched us into... I have to I have to move my phone and show you a couple of things. There might be some things you don't know about me. All right, all right. Then we moved into we got hired by Champion Motor Champion Racing, the Porsche dealership down here in Florida. Champion was running. There was a very seat, top secret Audi program that was being built there. And okay. let me see. This is this this is where it started. So I don't know if you can see that picture. Wow. So that's okay. Uh, that's the original World Challenge touring car team. The okay. driver, drivers were Derek Bell and Michael Galati. Um, we won that championship in 2001, two and three. And then for 2003, I'm sorry, we moved on. We built the RS6s. Um, that was with the original RS6. Look, there's a young Lewis right there. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> And but then that car turned into the wide body RS6, um, same car as the white one, but okay. the wide body cars. And so that competition in that moment is like a DTM or a that, Transam Championship. That that competition was what TC America turned into. They call oh, okay. it called it World Challenge here in America, and all the manufacturers participated in that. We had BMW, Cadillac, Audi, of course, Porsche. It was a yeah, very challenge, if I don't mistake. They have the same, uh, the same yeah. way, no? Yes. Then when that touring car program ended, I got really, I was really, really fortunate to be at the right place at the right time. And I ended up being a part of the Audi factory team. Wow. S yeah. Seriously? Oh, yeah. Um, in 2005, I ran uh, Frank Bila. Emanuele Piero and Alan McNish in the uh, in the Audi R8. Oh wow! So it's gonna be the North American team or for the yep. Europe team? That, that was the North American team. Oh and okay. We went to Le Mans in 2005 and won Le Mans. Um, then we came back and for 2006, 7, and 8, I ran 
the R the R10 TDI, the diesel car. Um, there it was a two car team. I ran one, and a, a good friend of mine ran the other car, and it was super successful. <laughs> at, at the at the end of 2008, when that R10 program ended in America, because we never went on and did the R14 or, or that car. That was uh, Team Yoast, and that was Europe only. But uh, when that program ended in 2008, for 2009, I, I said, I retire. Enough auto racing for me. That didn't last very long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I continued to do a lot of historic racing with friends of mine. But uh, I would be, you know, next thing I know, a, a team would call and say, hey, we need an engineer for a week, or we need a this or that. And I would just fly in and do this and do that. And I, it wasn't a full-time job for me. I was just doing it, you know, to help people out and for fun, get out of the house. And, uh, but in 2014 or 15, a new team was started. There's still a team in IMSA Michelin pilot called Rebel Rock Racing. You may have heard of that, but the, there was, there was a, the original Rebel Rock team started and they needed an engineer. And a good couple of good friends of mine were working on the team. I decided to, to do it. I did that for a season. And the next thing you know, I'm buying another truck and I'm re reconfiguring the workshop. And, you know, then we, we raced Audis in TCR in America the first years. We won the championship in 2018 with uh, Britt Casey Jr. and Tom Long. I have a picture of that car too. All right. So it's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of history. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The this, sport. Uh, this was the 2008 championship car. Okay. You can see that. Um, this is my this is my trophy cabinet in my office. This is just Alfa Romeo trophies with the IMSA car. Okay, so the 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 trophies about uh, about your motorsport career is it be is been another. Uh... <laughs> yes, yes. I, I I only have room in the trophy cabinet for like maybe two years at a time. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, uh, how is the how's the objective? And uh, what do you what do you do with uh, TMW Motorsport by TMR Engineering? What is the plans? What is, what do you see the future from Motorsport from Team? Of course. I mean, honestly, we started this Alfa Romeo in 2019. I, I bought the first two Juliettas, and uh, we really enjoyed that car. I never worked on an Alfa Romeo before in my life. I am Italian though, um, but. Uh, the fans enjoy that car so much that we've continued with it. And it, it's interesting now, like even going into 2025, um, IMSA has requested, what do we need to do to keep the Alfa Romeo in the series? They don't, they want us to stay. The fans love the car. The people love the car. The, uh, the competition is good. It's very in, in endurance format. That's another interesting thing. You know, the Alfa Romeo in endurance format is much more competitive than it is in sprint format. Um, and that's why we've been able to continue to run it. In endurance format, you're allowed to run motorsport ABS, analog brakes. Um, the weight distribution is very different. And I think we are probably the only Alfa Romeo in the world that took advantage of the homologation where we're allowed to convert to the Olin's damper. The Olin's damper changed that car so much. Um, and I know that this is true because I don't know if you follow, there's a team in Mexico that bought some of the Juliettas from America and they ran a 24 hour endurance race with it about a year ago. I, I was actually helping. I was, I was through on a, a team's call during the race and I helped engineer the car during the race from America, but uh, they finished third overall in a 24 hour endurance race. The, the Alfa Romeo is very competitive in endurance format. Um, in sprint format, the BOP is not good enough. And that's why you see no one running it. But anyway, for 2025, I, we're going to run the Alfa Romeo again. All um, right. I, matter of fact, th this is breaking news and I don't know. It's, it's not a hundred percent confirmed yet but we're going to try and run a two-car team next year and run two alfa romeos in imsa okay i, I own two veloces that are absolutely identically prepared so um, it's going to be a challenging for you but uh, do you know which drivers you you take from indycar from uh, i don't know I, you know we're, we're still working on sponsorship stuff and, and some of the finances and drivers will be dependent on on the money and we're not there, we're not 100 there yet 
but I have plenty of time. But I would say by the end of this month, by the end of October, we will make an official announcement. Okay, so of course I will let you to confirm this. I will let you in the description uh, all uh, social media about him, about you to to see the the news, of course, yeah. especially the breaking news. And uh, if you want to talk with uh, with him, with Luis Milone especially, and if you want to to talk with drivers, uh, social media in description uh, or. Uh, in the comment section down below is going to be a QA and a session with uh, Luis Milone if you want to ask him other something like Morseburg career, about uh, achievements, results. How can you get into this team and uh, other other things to do? Um, what do you recommend for a rookie or next generation, whatever you want to say? What do you recommend to start in motorsport? Uh, team, uh, competition, car, whatever. Well, I mean... You know, that's something that we've always been a big promoter of, are, are bringing young people in. One thing I noticed, I've been in this business for so long. When I walk down pit lane at an IMSA, I see the same, I see a lot of the same faces. Um, you know, after 35 years, we know everybody in pit lane. And, uh, but I don't see a lot of young people. And that's something that my partner and I, Kevin and I, have made a, a big point of, we always have interns. A couple of years ago, we did an open house with a university that's in town, the Florida Atlantic University, and they have a very diverse uh, engineering program and they have a formula SAE program. And I had all of the, the, the young kids from that program come to the shop. I walked them through, we talked about race cars, we showed them how, the, how we use data and telemetry and all these different technologies. And I offered an internship to one person in that group. And that that young man, his name is Anthony. He worked with us for he worked with us right up and through the end of 2023. And he is now in in the UK at the, I, one of those, I think it's the Cambridge School where they have the motorsport program. And he's on track. He would like to go to F1. Um, oh as, okay. as an engineer. Um, but he's not the only one we've had. We've probably had five young young kids through the program in the last six or seven seasons and all of them have gone on i tell them that this team my team we're just a step on the ladder i'm not a destination i'm a i'm a, a path to get there and uh you know i'm already 52 years old i'm kind of at the end of my career so that's this is a good place for someone to start but it's not a good place for someone to finish and uh Every one of my young interns has gone on to be successful with other teams. So I'm very, we're very proud of that. Um, we're actually working with this two or three young, young men, two young men and a young, a young woman. And one of them is going to become our, uh, an assistant for next year. All right. Uh, so it, it's, I recommend, I recommend anyone that's, that's younger and wants to get into motorsport. The, the best avenue is to get the, the engineering degree in college. Go to college, get the engineering degree, because those are the positions that pay the best money in motorsport. But if that's not for you, we also, some of our interns are, are mechanics and, and they come in and they work, they, they do the mechanical things, they end up over the wall, change tires, fueling, you know, whatever, whatever positions we need to fill. Um, but it, it, getting the foot in the door is always the hardest part. You know, I think my team is a bit of an anomaly that we take chances on young people. I think all teams should do this. And, uh, yeah, yeah and the rest is history, like I say. Yeah. 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 Now let's, uh, let's talk about a serious, uh, serious question, uh, Luis. Okay. In my country, the more sporting is being promoted by two phrases street is not circuit and champions are in circuit, not in the street. To tell us people for the first time who watching my interview, the people who are watching me, uh, the the last interview from the last projects and of course other projects will know exactly what I'm talking about. In your in your opinion, what do we have to do to convince people to come on events and track days, and what can we do to stop uh, street racing? Well, I mean, I think a lot of that comes from uh, from from proper upbringing. I mean, you know, you're if, if we're talking about young people. The first job is with their parents. You know, I mean, I had I have two daughters that were very much into motorsports. Um, 
and we did everything we ever did in our motorsports careers legally and properly with correct gear in the proper places. My daughters were jet ski racers. They were not, uh, they didn't race cars and they traveled the entire world. They went to China, they went to Vietnam, they went to Thailand. I mean, we raced all over the world and we did everything we did legitimately. And as a parent, you just have to be, you have to be present in your children's lives to keep them straight. And, you know, street racing, it's just dangerous. People die. I personally know people that have been killed doing that. I know people that are in jail for the rest of their lives because they were involved in accidents, street racing. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a terrible thing to get involved in. And, uh, so I, I think the first step is good parenting. Parents need to be aware of what their kids are. If you're giving your child the ability to have something that's essentially a weapon <laughs> and you're not monitoring and policing what they're doing, you're as much at fault as the, as the kid is. I mean, there's almost no excuse for it because I told you a story off, off camera before about the local racetrack that's closed up, but that's still only one facility. You know, Sitting right in my desk here in, in in Pompano Beach, Florida, there's a racetrack in Miami Homestead. There's a racetrack in Tampa. There's a racetrack in Daytona. There's a drag strip in Daytona. There's another racetrack being built in Fort Pierce right now today, the P1 Motorsport Club. Um, and all of those racetracks have, have access for young people. Um, I mean, just yesterday, I was at a, a Porsche Club event in Homestead. And I'm sorry, Sunday. I was at a, a Porsche Club event in Homestead. And for $400 for the day, you don't have to have a Porsche to run at a Porsche Club event. There were Corvettes. There were Mustangs. There, were, there was a Honda Civic, <laughs> um, a, a brand new, really nice Honda Civic R. Um, anyone could show up for $400 for the day, drive with an instructor for an hour, be released into a run group and have the time of their lives running around the racetrack all day. That's what parents should be promoting their young child, young kids that they know are into their motorsport activities. They should be promoting that. Um, like I said, I think it all starts in the home. I think it all starts in the home. All right. All right. And that's for sure. Um, coming on uh, events, on track days, especially to talk with people, talk with uh, team owners, drivers, staffs, because it's, it's open for everyone, it's welcome for everyone, like I say, and of course, you will see a different world, and that's for sure, this world has been amazing for you, coming for the first time, especially yeah. as a kid, to see racing, to see cars, to see uh, closed cars, especially you see these cars on TV, but also you can see so much clothes to, to you and other stuff, other stuff, uh, things to do. Uh, before we, uh, we start to the end of the interview and thank you so much Luis to, to accept uh, my invitation, a message for fans, for, uh, team fans, for champion, championship fans and others. Ooh. Well, first of all, if, if, if you're a fan of auto racing, you know, we, we thank you. I mean, this is, this is what we do this is what we love to do. Um, if you are interested in auto racing or really any motorsports for that matter, um, get out there, enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Um, especially in America, I, 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 I can't speak for all countries, but in America, it's very accessible. If you buy a gate pass for $75 at an IMSA race, an hour before the race, you're walking up and down pit lane, shaking hands, getting autographs. You've got a shopping bag. You've collected swag from every team on pit lane. And you've, I can assure you, you have had the time of your life. Um, don't be afraid to get out there and do it. You know, the worst part of an, a, an auto race event in, in the summertime in America is it's probably 100 degrees outside. <laughs> but it's 100 degrees everywhere. Um, yeah, get out and enjoy it. I mean, especially, I, I, I know I can speak very well for American american auto racing the teams are very happy to have the fans like we i mean as i mentioned to you again off camera before the fan walk of the event is my personal favorite part of the event i love interacting with the fans i, I love you know I, I i have like we give out stickers i have the stickers that we give out the little baby alphas on them to to every fan that comes by and in my pockets i keep the bigger sized ones and if there's little kids and they have you know racing gear on I reach into my pocket and I give the little kids the big ones. And 
the smiles on their faces. This is, that's that's what makes it so much fun. <laughs> um, and hopefully, some of those little kids will be involved in auto racing someday. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. The new generation uh, coming up and coming very very fast, like yeah, yeah. Uh, like other years or back in the day, actually. So uh, yes, come and uh, see uh, racing, guys, because uh, you don't know. Uh, You don't know uh, what do you expect, but uh, that's for sure after a weekend, like I say, because it's Friday, Saturday and Sunday also, Sunday with uh, racing, especially, of course, Michelin Pilot Challenge has been on Saturday, but also in uh, World Tech Sports Car Championship uh, Sunday and, of course, the, the rest of the competitions as well. Um, you will have a smile face after the, all, the, all uh, events. Uh, please, please, are you... <laughs> You want to say something? You want to say other I, something? I was speaking with you, yes. Ah, okay, okay. So uh, before we, we end the interview, if, if you have other words or uh, you want to tell us uh, others, other something? I'll tell you one thing we can do if, if, if you're interested. Um, I can walk outside of my office here and I can show you the race cars. Oh, okay, we we have a we have a couple of time. We have a couple of time before yeah. uh, before we start in the ending of the interview. So you can go to... To see all cars and I will uh, tell uh, the people, of course, guys, if you want to come on More Sport International as a partner as in in interview, uh, contact Luis Milon, Milo, Luis Milon, contact me. And after, after that, we will set a day and the time to know exactly, uh, of course, what do you say? What do you want to do, especially here in More Sport International, to tell us your story, your results, your achievements and other things to do. So yes, risk. You can see your right. race so this, is, this is exiting my office door right here. Ah, okay. We look around. We have uh, we have a TCR Audi being worked on here. Okay. Um, for club racing, for historic racing, and I think you'll recognize these cars. Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. So ah, look at this famous so, Alfa so here, Romeo. Here, here <laughs> And uh, they are 100% ready to be loaded up to go to Road Atlanta next week. Okay, okay. Season. Luis Jr. also. <laughs> uh, we have a, an air-cooled RSR. This is something we run in historic racing. We also run, uh, in addition to the Michelin Pilot, we run a gentleman by the name of Angus Rogers in the, the VP GSX class. And this is Angus's, this is current. This will also be at Road Atlanta. This okay. is it. GSX Cayman GT4. Ah, in, in VP also... Challenge, no? In VP Challenge, not in uh, Michelin. Exactly. Ah, okay. So that's just a little view of the, the race shop. There's a, there's a lot more to it, but I won't bore you with the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, uh, it's something new here on More Sport International and, of course, in an in inter interview to, to see... Uh, to see garage, more sport garage especially. Yeah. And uh, guys, uh, thank you so much to watching the watching again uh, the more sport international another interview. Who's next on more sport international? We don't know, but Luis Milone have uh, invited to contact other people. Of course, I uh, invite other people to to come here in more sport international. So uh, thank you so much. Let's see how 2024 continue and let's see how 2025 uh, start as well. And of course, the plans and other things to do. And guys, until next time, I'm back with Vlad Andrew. With me was Luis Malone. Thank you so much. See you next time, guys. Remember, street is not circuit. You are the best. And let's go racing. Vroom!